On today's episode of Photo Kitchen, I ask you a very basic question. Is it time for you and Photoshop to part ways? Hello and welcome to episode number 36 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're talking about digital post-production workflow and whether or not you still need Photoshop to be a part of it. Now, this is a bit of clickbait, I'm going to be honest with you, because I am not removing Photoshop from my workflow anytime soon. In fact, in this video, I'm still going to incorporate Photoshop as part of my workflow. However, you might find while watching this video, how you work with imagery, you may see that Photoshop might not need to be part of your workflow. Now, I will say that I have lessened my amount of usage of Photoshop, which has made my post-production workflow far easier, far less time consuming, and much more enjoyable, plus saving a lot of space on my hard drive. So what we're going to do this video is I'm going to talk about the old way that we used to do workflow a little bit and how this new way kind of fits into it and how it applies. So for many photographers, including myself up until about six months ago, the workflow has been the same. That is, you would go out, do a photo shoot, working inside of Camera Raw, come back, import your images into a Camera Raw editor, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, or in this case, Capture One. Once you got your images in, you would do your selects and then you would start to edit your images. And for many photographers, all that they would do is do a base edit or exposure on an image. So if I take a look at this photo shoot that I did of this model a few months ago and look at the actual raw file and show you the changes that I've made, this was the base exposure. And for many photographers, the adjustments that I made would be the same adjustments that they would make. I opened up the exposure values, opened up the brightness, shadows a little bit, and got the image overall, globally speaking, in a good place. Now, where a lot of photographers or retouchers would now take their image is into Photoshop for all of the other enhancements, color adjustments, retouching, all of that kind of stuff. The problem is that Photoshop is a massive program. I have almost 30 years of experience with this program, over 20 years of experience teaching it, and I can tell you that there is no steeper learning curve in a computer program that I personally teach than Photoshop. I see the eyes get a little glossy, I see students get presented with a whole lot of tools and a lot of different workflows, and also a lot of different ways to do the exact same thing. Photoshop is massive. It does still have a place, I'm not going to lie, and it still has a place in my workflow. But for many people, it might not be part of their workflow anymore. It could be something that they walk away from. Now, what I am doing now, instead of doing all of my adjustments, if I open up an image or show you an image that I did just a year ago, I have done all of my retouching here. I've done skin enhancement. I've gotten rid of a lot of little adjustments or problems on the actual tower here, some graffiti. But I've also done all of my color enhancements, my color grading, my tonality, all of that kind of stuff has been done to this image. Now, the problem with this is, is that if I need to make a change to the tonality or the color, the client has a problem, the subject wants to see something change, I have to come back in and open up the Photoshop document and make all of these changes. That is actually very inefficient. Now, I'm not going to lie. If you're doing heavy image compositing, if I open up another image that I shot almost two years ago, which is just a lovely image of my friend Tasha enjoying her morning cup of coffee, this image has a fair amount of retouching here. And I will say that retouching and image compositing and selections, this is still where Photoshop reigns supreme. If you're doing a lot of work where you're shooting on green screens or you're taking multiple images and combining them together, you unfortunately are still going to do most of your work in Photoshop. That's just the way this program is designed and they're not really probably going to make changes to Lightroom or Capture One or at least not anytime soon. So for an image like this where I have to make a selection of this gentleman just relaxing in this bathtub in the background and change the color of his skin to something, you know, maybe a little bit more of a winter than a summer, I needed the, the advanced selection tools inside of Photoshop, adjustment layers, that kind of technology. 
But if I go back to the studio shoot that I just did a few months ago, in this particular image, all that I've done in Photoshop is I've just done a few image enhancements. I use smart objects a lot. I'll include a link in the description for this video on how I use smart objects as part of retouching. All that I am doing here is making basic retouching things, removing blemishes, flyaway hairs, any of that kind of work. All that tonality, all that contrast, color adjustment, color grading, all of that work now is no longer being done in my workflow inside of Photoshop. Rather, what I am doing is coming into a program like Capture One, although you can do this in uh, Lightroom Classic or Lightroom, and I'm doing all of this heavy lifting to the image in this program. Even though that this is a PSD file, Capture One, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic can read these files and make further edits to them. The beauty of this is, is all of these adjustments happen inside of this program and they are non-destructive. That's a huge benefit, meaning that you can't mess anything up. You don't have multiple levels of history that you have to worry about. You also don't have to worry about doing anything destructive that you can't easily undo. If you don't know how to operate Photoshop correctly, every edit that you make could be destructive and you could be painting yourself into a corner. But in a Camera Raw program, they are designed to be 100% non-destructive. So anything that I do here can be undone at any particular time. Also, I don't have to have multiple versions of the file. I can make multiple copies. In this case, they call them clone variants inside of Capture One, but they're called virtual copies inside of Lightroom. And I don't have to have, say, three or four different versions of a PSD file. Instead, I could have one PSD file and just multiple versions of that PSD file in my Camera Raw editor. So let's look at the workflow as I see it now. For most of my work that does not involve heavy image composition, I am shooting, I am importing into Camera Raw programs, in this case again, Capture One. Then I'm going into Photoshop and I'm doing all of my retouching. But once I'm done with that retouching, the PSD comes back into Capture One and this is where I'm going to do all of my work. And again, this could be Lightroom, it could be Lightroom Classic. Now, one thing that I do like about Capture One over the Adobe Lightroom, Lightroom Classic programs is the ability to do layers in my edit. So if I come into here, you could see that I have a contrast layer, a base color layer, and a color grade layer. By being able to put these adjustments into their own layer, I have opacity control and I could dial them up or down. I usually edit a little bit heavy and then dial these settings up or down as need be. One other thing that I love about this workflow opposed to doing this inside of Photoshop is now I can color grade much easier. Now, Capture One's had this for a lot longer. They have a color balance panel that allows you to assign colors to midtones, shadows, and highlights. Lightroom Classic has color grading, which is relatively new, but does the exact same thing. An interesting side note, you can't color grade easily inside of Photoshop. Color grading inside of Photoshop requires you to really understand adjustment layers and all sorts of blending modes and making advanced selections of the shadows, midtones, and highlights. You need to be ridiculously experienced inside of Photoshop to color grade inside this program, where Capture One or Lightroom, you just move some things around and hey, look at that, the shadows are blue, now they're orange, right? It's very straightforward, it's very simple. But from here, I can again, make multiple copies or iterations of those PSD files. So now I have two PSD files. One is my color graded image and the other one is a black and white conversion. But I do not have two PSD files sitting on my hard drive. This is stored in the Capture One session database, but this could be a catalog in Capture One or of course catalog inside of Lightroom Classic or the online database for Lightroom. All of this information is stored there and you don't have files starting to take up more and more space on your hard drive. If I hop over to my operating system, I've basically done in Photoshop what I would normally do in Capture One. So I have a base PSD file, I have my color enhancements and color graded images, and I also have a black and white conversion. In Capture One, I would only have to have one PSD file. This is 60 megapixels, 16 bit. So I'm about 1.2 gigabytes in file size. But if I was to do the more traditional Photoshop workflow, I would have my color image occupying another one point, in this case, 1.35 gigabytes, and then my black and white file occupying another 1.3 gigabytes of hard drive space. This is going to add up. This is going to fill up your hard drive. This is not a good way to work if we could avoid it. 
So this is where somebody might be asking, well, why don't you just do all of your image enhancements inside of Camera Raw first? Be it Capture One, be it Lightroom, whatever. Do Go ahead and make your original camera file, instead of looking very basic like this, get to this point and then bring it inside of Photoshop to further adjust the image. That is not a bad question. But the problem with that is, is that then I am retouching this particular look. And if all of a sudden a client, a boss, a coworker comes in and says, hey, we think that the image looks a little too heavy as far as contrast goes, or we'd like to go in a different direction with white balance. The problem is, is you've done all this retouching to this look and you're locked into that retouching. You've sampled the skin and retouching from this area and color. You've sampled this blue from the jacket to retouch the clothes. You're stuck with that edit. So now what you would have to do is redo the camera raw edit and come back into Photoshop and redo the edit all over again. That is a huge waste of time. This workflow allows you to actually go into the PSD file. And if you wanted to do something as simple as a modification, which is going to be my red dot here to show this. So when I come back into Capture One, those changes that I made to the PSD file appear here. But if all of a sudden, again, that client walks in and says, hey, MD, we want to go into a different direction with white balance, or we want to go into a different direction with contrast. Can you lower the contrast? Can you increase the contrast? I can go ahead and do that. And all those edits that I made in Photoshop get changed in the Camera Raw program, and I don't have to go back into Photoshop to make any additional changes. Plus, any cloned variant or virtual copy in Lightroom terminology also gets updated at the exact same time. So the beauty and simplicity of this workflow is now that I have my edits done, I can copy and paste these changes to other images from my photo shoot, have a more consistent look. I'm also not waiting for each one of these images to open, copying settings from one PSD file to another PSD file. I'm far more efficient. I'm using my time more wisely. I have a lot more space on my hard drive. And not to mention, I have a much easier workflow. I have a much easier interface and controls found in these camera raw programs. I don't have 18 different ways to color balance. I don't have six different ways to apply contrast. There's only one or two ways in these programs, and that makes you far more efficient. Sure, this doesn't mean that Photoshop's completely out of my workflow, but it might be out of your workflow or it might be looked at differently in your workflow. Yes, if you're doing heavy composition work, you're going to be continuing to use Photoshop. But if you're shooting headshots, weddings, family portraiture, landscape work, all of that type of imagery is going to probably fit into this new workflow really well and save you a lot of time, especially if you're just getting into Photoshop and getting comfortable with that program. So what is your current digital workflow? Is this new workflow something that interests you or are you already incorporating it or something like it in your own day-to-day -day work? How much Photoshop work do you do compared to your Lightroom or Capture One work? I would love to read about your own personal workflow experiences in the comment section below. I really want to thank you for watching. Please like this video if you haven't already done so already. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And please share this video with any photographer that's currently trying to find their own special recipe or sauce for their digital workflow. Until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from the photo kitchen.